All right. Welcome to the latest Test Talks radio episode. Uh, we have myself, William McKenzie, and actually AJ of Tezos Commons hosting yeah. today. Yes, um, sir. It's actually my first uh, podcast recording with you, Will, so should be yes, fun. Sir. Yes, sir. Also joining us is uh, Marissa True of TZ APAC, um, Dorian of Silo Wallets, and Philip of I'm Token. How's everyone doing? Hey, good, good. Yeah, pretty decent. Great to be here. Awesome. Yeah, so I guess we can just, you know, go ahead and kick things off here, Marissa. Uh, could you kind of introduce us to TZ APAC and some of the work uh, that's going on there? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, essentially, I'm a marketing manager at TZ APAC. Um, and to give you like a general introduction to what our company does, it's a leading Asia based public blockchain consultancy uh, for to support the Tezos ecosystem. Um, it designs like value added blockchain transformation strategies for enterprises and creators with like a very bottom up approach. So we work closely with blockchain experts and other stakeholders within the Tezos ecosystem. Um, and TZ APAC supported by the Tezos Foundation, and we're actually headquartered in Singapore. Awesome. So I guess one question I had for you um, in the Asian Pacific region, what, can you kind of tell us what is the general sense and feel for crypto there at the moment? Yeah. Um, so. TZ APAC launched about a year ago, basically because the APAC opportunity was massive. Um, it's particularly bullish about blockchain and crypto adoption. Uh, so to kind of offer it a little bit of context, um, according to some reports in 2018, uh, spending on blockchain and APAC was around $285 million. But then estimates suggested that in 2019, investment saw an 83, 84% increase, taking it to about 524 million and then some predictions place uh value and investment to 2.5 billion dollars it by 2022 with the vast majority of investment expected to take place in china um and there's kind of there's a lot of key factors that sort of make this region unique and kind of and perfect mm -hmm. for cryptocurrency adoption um so First and foremost, there's a very favorable regulatory environment here. Uh, for example, we're based in Singapore and it's considered one of the most crypto friendly countries in the world um, because there's a lot of innovation in the fintech space and cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology is just naturally a part of that. Um, when it comes to the population, there's a huge rising middle class, you know, who have increased spending power and a massive appetite to invest. And then I think what I think is personally one of the key and most important factors is that this entire region is mobile first. So digital products and payments are very native in this region. And at the same time, it's fragmented and there's a largely unbanked population. So while that presents its challenges, there's also enormous opportunity and potential for people to actually leapfrog you know, traditional finance structures into more tech driven ones. And that's something that blockchain products are really well equipped to serve. Um, and if, you know, I feel like it, if the audience is still skeptical, to give you a sense of the scale of the APAC population, the total number of internet users as of 2020 uh, is estimated around 400 million. And so the digital economy is expected to be valued at about 300 billion by 2025. So. There's just a lot of energy and focus in the tech and the finance space. That's incredible. Um, shifting on the focus on, on, on the Tezo C ecosystem itself, um, I know you just started working with TZA Pack, but how did you jump into Tezos and, and, and what made you want to jump into the Tezos ecosystem? Personally? Yeah, personally. So um, my blockchain journey, as it were, uh, yeah. started late last year, where I took a personal interest, uh, personal interest just in the general finance space, and then basically looking at the impact of the pandemic on the economy, like the global economy, and then what alternatives there were, and what people were starting to pay a bit more attention to, and naturally that led me down the uh, blockchain and crypto rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then I happened to have heard of TZ APAC because it was one of the main, uh, one of the main blockchain companies, oh, yeah, blockchain companies and consultancies that were operating out of Singapore with a very strong reputation. And this was also coming at the same time as their, uh, as the criticisms around the eco-friendliness and the green factor around Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so I started to look into that. And then obviously Tezos being one of the lowest energy consuming blockchains, it, it mm -hmm. really caught my eye. Um, yeah, I would say that was pretty much my journey into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so essentially TZAPAC formed, um, you guys are specifically focused on the Asian Pacific region area. And so what, what are some initiatives that some things that you guys are doing to build the Tezos ecosystem in that area? So uh, TZ APAC basically focuses on helping improve the developer experience and then advising um, them with technical integration and support. Uh, we also do a lot of work to introduce partners who are building uh, projects on the blockchain to other by introducing them to other relevant projects uh, and introducing them to potential investors and just basically making sure that they have the support system to succeed. Um, and at the same time, our starting focus is to basically set up the infrastructure rails to boost the accessibility of Tez as a cryptocurrency within the regional ecosystem. So one of the primary ways uh, we plan to do this is through smart wallet integration. Um, and the reason we focus on smart wallets is because they have the added advantage of being like a great retail adoption strategy. Uh, it acts as a gateway for people to buy, trade and hold cryptocurrencies. Um, for example, you know, China, as I said before, it's a very significant market for us. And I'm Token has helped act as a key gateway for us to onboard more Chinese users into mm -hmm. the Tezos ecosystem. And then Silo, on the other hand, you know, is doing a great job of pushing enterprise adoption, um, encouraging the use of cryptocurrencies and daily transactions. Um, we thought that was particularly evident with the Coca-Cola partnership they did, where customers could buy Coca-Cola from vending machines using Bitcoin. Um, and so, oh, yeah, it's just... It's, so, sorry, through so Silo, you could actually purchase Coca Cola through Bitcoin with, with the wallet itself. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll let I'll let Dorian cover that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When he comes, yeah. <laughs> but I, <laughs> we thought it was we thought it was awesome, um, and yeah, it really caught crazy. our eye. Yeah. 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 So I I guess this would be a good time now to uh, shift over to I'm Token and. Uh, you know, Dorian, maybe could you share a bit more details? You know, what kind of prompted the decision to integrate with Tezos? Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, just just for clarity. So I'm from Silo side. Um, oh, on here. Uh, will you, do you want to kick off with me or kick off with with I'm Token? Uh, let's kick off with Philip. We'll, we'll have to edit that. Yeah, we'll edit it. But yeah, okay. So let, let's go on with Philip. Um, being from I'm Token, uh, China based. We'd love to know more about you. Um, like, how, how did you end up uh, choosing Tezos? I mean, since like there's so many crypto wallets out there, and um, like, what what provides a unique aspect of of uh, I'm Token over the others? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess there are two questions, right? Um, the first one, what's what's I'm Token? Um, so we talked about it. Um, Marissa talked about it very briefly, where based out of Singapore and also mainland China. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually started in 2016, so pretty early in in, uh, in blockchain terms and industry terms, right? And um, I still remember we presented the first IAM token at Ethereum DEF CON in Shanghai in 2016. And from that we grew by a lot, just as the ecosystem grew a lot in China. And then 2018, we um, completely updated the app. Um, we basically released a completely new app. Um, what was only an Ethereum wallet earlier is now basically since that time a multi-chain wallet with uh, 12 different chains now, including Tezos, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others. And um, there is an integrated exchange, decentralized exchange in the wallet and a DAP browser and lots of other features. Um, 
our user base is still largely Asian and largely Chinese um, um, within Asia. Um, I'd say mostly because we started in China, right? And then it just grew and grew. Um, because if you still go to, if you go to any blockchain meetup right now in China, um, people would always know I'm Token and they would always tell you, oh, you're from I'm Token. Um, I've been using I'm Token for three years. Um, so it's really, it, it's really, it's really um, deeply rooted in that community. Um, we do focus a lot on two points, I'd say, security and usability. So I think we're we're going to have a look at the Tezos wallet part later. But um, I guess you'll see that it's at least we try to make it very easy to use, right? And I think that's that's a huge benefit. And then I think your second question basically is about Tezos. Um, what's the decision for Tezos? Um, I think we basically integrate what our users would like to have, right? So I'm talking integrates Tezos because our users are asking for it. Um, and why are our users asking for it? I think there's a huge focus on proof of stake right now, right? We did integrate other proof of stake chains as well. Um, and Tezos, I think, is more and more looking into Asia. Um, I think Marissa would confirm. And we actually noticed that from the integration part, um, Tezos APEC gave us a huge support for, um, for the integration. So shout out, um, thanks to Marissa and the team. Um, nice. So there, there, is, there is the ask from the user to, to have more um, proof of stake chains. And Tezos is obviously like um, one of the most important proof of stake chains out there. Um, and that's, I think, when we got in touch with Tezos. And then we had the support um, and integration was super smooth. Awesome. Can you actually share some statistics um, uh, for, for, with, uh, on your wallet, specifically in the Asia area? Yeah, so statistics in terms of users, I guess. Um, yeah, so we do have around a million monthly active users right now. Wow. Um, more than 70% should be mainland China, right? So that's a huge focus, um, which basically means um, the second largest countries are like um, always changing, but I'd say something in Asia. Um, so that big part is Korea, Japan, Indonesia, for example, um, always changes a little bit. So there's Asian countries and then there's um, also US. Um, Europe and um, yeah, other countries. Um, in terms of Tezos, I, I looked at the numbers. Um, so we integrated Tezos not too long ago. And the interesting part about integrating, right, Tezos is not the first proof of stake chain we integrated. But um, the interesting part I find for proof of stake chains is with Tezos right now, we saw like lots of engagement in the first weeks. Um, I think nice. we had it, like 2% or almost 2% of stake of uh, baking traffic um, in I'm token. Speaking of 100% uh, would be the whole, whole network and we had wow. like 2%. And then it's slowly going down um, yeah. because people are baking, like they have like one transaction where they would stake um, in any proof of stake chain. And then it's interesting to see like, um, Staking is not something you do every day, right? You hold it, um, it's a long term, but that's just uh, in terms of numbers, um, pretty interesting, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be in line with like, even Coinbase. If you actually look at Tezos itself and you see the statistic of how many people, how many days people are holding the token, it's actually one of the highest ones. I know uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, of course, are always number one, but I think Tezos is up there with top five, I think around 45 day average where people hold their tokens. I think that has to do with baking and um, just essentially parking your Tezos there and letting it stake. And you don't have to actually move it or do anything because it's accumulating as you're participating in the network. But um, let, let, let's actually go through a walkthrough of your of, of, of your wallet. I'd love to see how it in action I'm token and 
and like how easy, how friendly the, the actual uh, interface is. Yeah, you, you can tell me. I can show you. You can tell me how friendly it looks to you. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd um, share my screen. So let's see. Yep, there you go. Um, I keep it in that format. So I just pre-recorded um, like 15 minutes ago. Um, OK, great. And I'll just show you the basic features that we have in IAM token. Um, I actually just sent a transaction of XTC to my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the transaction details that's in IAM token. Um, you get all the details right in the app, but there's also a link to Tesla's Explorer. Um, that's cool. I see my balance, I see my address. If I want to receive and to send, I can just swipe. So let's see how sending looks like. I'm sending as um, usual interface, but what's interesting is there's an address book. Um, oh, that's that's cool. actually pretty convenient. Um, so essentially, then you can just send it directly to a person that you saved in your address book rather than just typing in the address every time. Right. Nice. Right. And that's not actually Arthur's actual address. Um, yeah. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> or maybe it is. But um, <laughs> yeah, I could just uh, send my total balance. Um, I didn't. And then the interesting, or well, before we look at staking here, um, if you want to receive some funds, QR code address that you can copy. But let's look at staking, because staking is built in into the wallet. And I would see my balance and I would see my delegate balance. I haven't delegated yet, but I can click on any baker, um, see the information and click on delegate to actually start baking. We do have our own I'm token baking node. And that's how I would delegate. It's just, it's literally one click in the wallet. I didn't delegate. Um, to keep the video short, let's go back to the wallet, and that's pretty so, much already it. So I you just can essentially delegate directly to I'm Token. Yeah. Is that what it is? Well, the I'm Token baking note, right? Okay, um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have right. any plans to um, open that up and choose other delegates in the ecosystem? Um, again. Oh, do you have any other plans to like open it up and being able to choose a different baker? Um, with oh, yeah. the, the, oh, you can right there. Okay, great. Cool. Right. You, we do. I think that's really important to us. Um, yeah. I, I think there are some wallets out there who have the strategy of um, they would offer you their own um, staking or baking node service. Um, but it's really important to us. I think in I'm talking, we have the philosophy. Um, the general philosophy, the general idea to be open and um, transparent. And if the user wants to choose a different baking node, um, feel free to choose it, right? Um, mm -hmm. We always want to give you that option. And I think in there's one more feature that I didn't show. Um, obviously, there is a dev browser. And in the dev browser, you can also buy Tezos, um, which is what I just did 20 minutes ago because I noticed I didn't have any Tezos yet in my test wallet, um, which is really convenient um, because yeah. it's right within the wallet. And can you um, buy with a credit card? Um, I didn't test it. So what I did was I, I bought with um, with another crypto. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, with the dev browser, um, you can use pretty much any service, right? And there's mm -hmm. some services that make it super simple to buy crypto to crypto at least because they um, they fetch your wallet address they fetch your wallet address so you don't even need to enter it um, manually but they would fetch your address um, and it's just literally one click again dev browser it's also the same philosophy you have all i think we have a couple of hundred devs um, so you can pretty much, and you can enter any URL. It's like a browser. Uh, you can right. enter any website you want. Um, so yeah, convenient. 
Very cool. How, how do you like it? Oh, it looks awesome. It looks, I like the, how you can swipe <laughs> and yeah, I also like how you can just choose the baker very conveniently. <laughs> Are you actually familiar with um, the Kukai wallet? Not too familiar. I know it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's some cool features. You can actually um, do a direct auth where you can send people NFTs or tokens through Twitter or Facebook. And that might be a cool feature to consider in the future if that's on your roadmap or not, but it makes it very easy to um, send transactions. It looks awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I guess uh, one other thing uh, to add, is there any DeFi strategy that you all are considering, Philip? I, I think it was mentioned that you're working on token law and DEX, I believe. Right. So token on Dex is um, it's kind of a spin-off out of I'm Token, um, but it's integrated within I'm Token, the the app. And it's funny that you ask because DeFi is most of what's happening in in blockchain right now. So absolutely. Like if you have a strategy, you basically have a DeFi strategy, I guess. Um, but I'd say yeah, you could also define baking as DeFi. Is it? Um, you earn some yield on your stake tokens. Um, so I would say both is part of it. Baking is really important or staking in general. So not only with Tezos, but in general, every time we integrate some proof of stake chain, we add the staking feature. Um, we did it with all the proof of stake chains. Um, and the same for Ethereum, um, which is slowly starting to have some proof of stake features um, and we might be the first wallet that is actually building um, bringing out some I think it's not public yet but we are going to release um, or maybe already have released at this time um, a feature to to um, generate ETH2 wallets wide uh, address and key pairs in, inside your inside your app, inside your mobile app. Um, so staking in general is a big topic. Um, DeFi in general, we do have the DApp browser, and we recently just um, integrated a hundred more DApps. But pretty much every time there is some interesting DApp, we integrate it into I'm Token, which just means we add the URL and a nice icon, and people are able to search for the name in the DApp browser. But if there's any DAP, you can use it already in I'm Token. It's just like a browser, you type in the URL. But what's really important to us is to actually support DAPs. Sometimes um, there's, there would be some bug um, with the mobile wallet. So we contact the DAP, um, any DAP, not only DeFi, and fix it and help, it, help them to fix it. Um, so that's the second part of DeFi strategy, I'd say. Um, but then DeFi in general, um, we write a lot of content about DeFi. Um, I think lots of tutorials, how to use dApps. Um, so it's it's a huge focus. And I would say it's, um, when I think about like, is there any other focus? Like, do we have any, do we have any other dApp focus right now? I don't know, like recently as NFTs, um, but, what we have had like a year ago or two years ago, um, there's whole categories that are completely gone. Um, so it's mostly DeFi right now. So DeFi strategy, yeah, we do have it. Right. And it's kind of been this trend, you know, I, I think at one point, maybe 2019, 2020-ish early, you know, the, the whole buzz was kind of STOs and, you know, we've seen that kind of die off a bit into DeFi and obviously within Tezos NFTs. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Hicket Nunk, I believe, here and now, but we're, we're definitely seeing a lot of stuff start to spring up around that within uh, the ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah, um, I guess before we wrap up, um, are there any other expected releases that we can 
see from you all in the near future? Yeah, so we talked a lot about DeFi, uh, staking. I think a huge focus in general is layer twos. So, we, mm -hmm. I mean, we just talked about um, the use cases that are not in focus right now, probably also because um, most of the dApps that people use in I'm talking are on Ethereum, but then Ethereum is becoming harder to use or more expensive to use the more users. Right. And the more successful it becomes, which is kind of interesting. Um, so a huge focus is, um, for example, um, supporting dApps from other chains, right? Supporting dApps from new chains. And that's, I think, also why we, uh, the Tesla's integration was really interesting. Um, new chains, new, new chances. But um, layer twos, um, same same idea. Layer twos are really important. I think that's it has been a huge focus of us um, in the last weeks. So we added, we already started supporting custom um, remote node connections, um, something that MetaMask also recently released. Um, so you can, for example, use some layer twos, um, but you can also use. Um, lots of those new chains that people are using, those uh, centralized chains like uh, Binance Smart Chain and Heco. Um, I think that's what um, lots of users were asking for. But then also, um, we recently just released native support for CK Sync Layer 2, um, which I think will be a huge new focus in general. Um, Besides, besides new chains, besides new blockchains, so layer two, um, and then the what I'm personally really interested in is I think the decentralized exchange, um, so token loan, which is in I'm token. Um, they're adding lots of tokens, and outside of I'm token, there will be more and more DeFi dApps, I guess still. So that's going to stay a focus, helping to um, make those steps work for our users, um, publish tutorials, push steps that are interesting to the Chinese market. Um, yeah. Sounds exciting. It is. But, but yeah, um, that's, it sounds great, but let's, let's also introduce it Dorian into this, uh, into the podcast and actually get his perspective and see what his wallet's like as well. So Dorian, you represent Silo. So um, I would love to know more about your background and um, and more about Silo and why'd you choose Tezos to integrate it? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I, I probably came from a slightly different um, bent. Um, so my background is in um, communications technologies. Um, mm -hmm. So like I actually, um, we've been working on Silo for the better part um, of, uh, of half a decade now. Um, we, we started off coming from the point of view of trying to solve the, the data privacy issue, um, you see, with mainstream messengers and uh, mainstream platforms. Um, my background was in um, digital consulting where I got a really good insight um, into uh, helping businesses market through the Facebooks of the world, but also seeing just how much was going on in the background in terms of data capture and harvesting. Um, so we embarked on a bit of a mission with Silo to launch a, um, a decentralized communications platform um, and we launched our version one in early 2017, uh, but then as blockchain started emerging more um, towards late 2017, uh, we saw the opportunity to integrate value exchange and digital assets into a messenger style experience. Um, so that's what we've been building out on the protocol layer for the last few years. Um, and we've launched the Silo Smart Wallet on our communications protocol, uh, which is in a nutshell, think of it like a private messenger combined with a crypto wallet uh, from that point of view, but it's from the ground up decentralized. Um, a, a lot of R&D's gone into lo those components um, on that side. Um, and we've we put out our, our first um, version of the smart wallet in late 2019. Um, and we've had a, a good amount of pickup. Um, so we've got users across more than 60 countries now. Uh, I've had a lot of adoption um, throughout Asia um, in particular, um, in, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, um, Japan, um, and India um, being sort of very hot areas of interest. 
um, but we've also had sort of usage throughout um, Australasia because we're, we're a New Zealand based company. Um, so like Australia mm -hmm. and New Zealand, um, and then also spatterings throughout Europe um, on that side as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but we, we were getting um, usage um, pick up and we actually, where this came from in terms of looking to work with Tezos was we started getting pings from our users um, to add to our STZ support because uh, we were, we just had Bitcoin and Ethereum ERC20 support in the wallet. Um, and, you know, we keep getting um, tapped on the shoulder going, hey, add the support, add the support. So we reached out to the, the TZ APAC team and it was, um, it was awesome. Um, we had a really good engagement. Um, it sort of helped us every step of the way and we worked out a bit of a game plan to bring in um, XTZ functionality into the wallet. Um, so we've positioned ourselves as a multi-chain non-custodial wallet uh, where we just bring in, um, you know, additional functionalities and additional chains as makes sense. Um, so we worked pretty close with the TZ APAC team and over the last... Um, six months, uh, we've built out and launched XTZ support in the wallet. Um, we've launched the ability to purchase XTZ using, um, using bank cards, and we've also launched Tezos Baking directly within um, the app UX, uh, which, is, uh, which is pretty cool, but it's been, a, been an awesome experience working with the TZ APAC team um, sort of every step of the way, and I think we're going to keep working um, together. We've got some sort of evolving conversations on what comes next on um, that um, side as well. Um, but I, I mean, I can... In terms of the application, I can actually throw it up on screen now and do a bit of a walkthrough as we're talking through it. It might be a good visual aid. Yeah, it would be awesome. Let's see. Let's check it out. Yeah, sweet. So, Dorian, what, what's the adoption been like in Asia since you've launched on uh, – since you've launched Tesos? Cool. I'm just checking. You guys are seeing my screen there? Yep. Yep. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been pretty good. Um, pretty good. So the, the baking functionality is pretty new. I think we pushed that out about a month ago. Um, but we're seeing, seeing relatively good pickups. So we're doing some specific promotions around that to try and target the, the Tezos community um, to get more adoption. Um, but the, the numbers that are flowing in and people adding XTZ to the wallets and engaging with the baking features is, is slowly starting to pick up, uh, which is really awesome to see. Because um, our positioning um, you know, very much is... We've we got two different angles um, from our application. Obviously, we've got the existing cryptocurrency users that have assets and we're looking to give them more ways to use those assets or get use out of those assets. Um, but we also have a, a bent towards the private communication side uh, for people looking to adopt um, a, a, a more secure, more private messenger um, from a data privacy standpoint. Um, and then they sort of converge in the middle in terms of the, the overlap between the features. Um, but it, as you can see here, it's sort of a, a messenger style format. Um, you can add and chat with your contacts. Um, and the bottom here, we've also got um, the wallet, um, which you can access. Oh, that's cool. So that, that's actually the wallet itself. It's, I thought it was your conversation window, like Apple Messages yeah. or Google, but that's crazy. So it's, it's a conversational style wallet. We've got these two independently. Um, so as you can yeah. see here, we've got, uh, so we've got four blockchains in here. We've got Sensnet, which is an Australasian-based chain we work with, um, Tezos, which we've integrated, um, and then we've got Ethereum in the RC20s, and then Bitcoin at the top there as well. Um, Very if cool. I go into Tezos, um, you can see within there, we've actually just added the crypto tracker functionality in there. Um, mm -hmm. where you can actually uh, monitor the pricing directly in the app, which is quite mm -hmm. cool to sort of say gone out to CMC. Um, and we've also got the Tezos baking live there, as you can see in the earnings. Um, so when a user first gets in and adds XTZ to their wallet, um, they can actually just activate the earning mechanism. Um, and it's sort of just a one tap process. And then once you've opened it up, um, then you just get this, this dashboard, which sort of shows you the ongoing balance and interest um, um, that you'll be earning on the balances. Um, but the, the cool piece in regards to that um, is in relation to the fact that um, you don't have to lock up the funds. Um, so any balance that's sitting in your wallet is, is freely movable um, and it just calculates based on the balance that's sitting there over periods of time um, from that piece, uh, which, is, um, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of the overall functionality platform, um, in the uh, similar to IM token, we've also got a DAP browser, but that's only on um, Android um, because mm -hmm. of the, the App Store terms and conditions, which is an interesting one. Um, so we're trying to find a way to offer that um, that functionality to our users as well. Um, but in terms of the XTZ functionality, also if you go within a context of a chat, um, you can send directly within um, chat like a message. Um, so it sort of saves having a, to remember and bang in the um, the long form public uh, public addresses. Um, so I can just tap the um, icon here. Hit send, um, select a particular currency, um, and then you just specify the amount and send it in there. 
Um, so Looks that, awesome. It reminds me of Venmo. I don't know if, if you ever used it, but in the States, um, you can actually just kind of send 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 money, peop, uh, money to people just, just through a conversation and just through a message. And it's very yeah, social. So that's, that's very much what we've been focusing um, in yeah. terms of being a really easy, straightforward UX um, within the application there as well. Um, might be some slight delays here because I'm actually screen sharing to the Mac and then the Mac screen share to, to the streaming platform here, but <laughs> you get, yeah, no just a bit. Um, and then yeah. within the transaction, obviously you can pop through um, and then go through which links through to, to the XTZ Explorer um, or whatever other chain you're using um, for the confirmations, um, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, that's sort of like an overall um, picture on it. Um, you know, our, our focus is very much on accessing the um, the bridge. Um, so, you know, we're going after the, those 95% of mainstream messenger users that aren't in crypto yet, but we're also providing an easy way for um, main uh, crypto users to get their friends um, and, uh, you know, family and associates into crypto by sort of just sending them a message uh, with some assets to, to get them rolling on that site. Um, and then obviously uh, Marissa mentioned the Coke BTC stuff, um, which we mm -hmm. launched last year, uh, which was quite interesting. That was a partnership between us, a New Zealand company called Centra Pay, and um, uh, Coca-Cola Amateur, which is the Australasian um, Coca-Cola app. And what we wow. launched was the ability to purchase any products from their smart betting machines. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it was around 4,000 across New Zealand and Australia um, using Bitcoin. Um, and that was sort of the first proof of concept. Obviously, Bitcoin, you know, isn't practically the best currency to use for, mm -hmm. for small purchases like that. Um, but it was sort of necessary to get Coke across the line because it was the major known asset. Um, we're now sort of working in the background to develop custom assets that actually represent specific products of theirs. Um, which is quite cool. It's sort of a bridge between the digital asset and the NFT world um, from that point of view, uh, which is pretty cool. Wow. Is, is there any plans to like just open it up not and basically buy Coke uh, using different assets like Tezos or Ethereum rather than just only using Bitcoin? Yeah. So interestingly enough, um, you know, they were quite reserved until we launched the BTC stuff, but they saw that went well. People liked it. Um, and it went successfully. Now they're, we're having active conversations with them about sort of where it can go and how they can sort of get more invested um, and go go all in around um, more customized features, um, which is yeah, pretty cool. So we're excited about where that could end up going. How long was the process of actually getting Coke on board and being able to do that? Because I, I can't imagine a company of that size being very yeah. open and there's probably a ton of bureaucracy to go through to actually get that approved. Big time. So that um that was actually a, a, we worked with uh, with Centropay pretty closely on this. Um, so the founder of Centropay, he he actually founded one of the largest traditional payment networks in the country. Um, so mm -hmm. we had previous relationships based on that, and he started the conversations. But the whole process probably took us twelve months to get to the point wow. where they were comfortable launching a campaign. Um, so it was quite quite a long burn on that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Great. I um, mean, I mean, is there anything in terms of uh, future roadmap or any features that future releases that you want to implement into Silo before we yeah, wrap up? Yeah. Here? Um, I actually just pulled up a roadmap before our team's just updated it. Um, so th there's a few things on the roadmap, but we're focusing a lot, um, sort of over the next quarter, around um, getting in some really cool NFT integrations into the wallet. Um, so obviously, a, a piece people are really interested in is more visual representations of NFT support uh, within wallets. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're, we're taking a very visual approach to adding those and um, we should have some stuff there launched um, before the quarter's out, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, how how would that work? So essentially you can actually have NFTs in the wallet and be able to send it to people? Yeah, and have the visual representation. You can almost be interacting with them like stickers, like you would in like Telegram. Oh, very cool. Wow. Um, which is quite cool. Yeah. There's some cool concepts our designers are playing around with at the moment, um, yeah. which is pretty exciting. Um, and the one other piece we're working on it as well is NFT-based permission groups. Um, mm -hmm. So it's almost segmenting off. Um, and if you hold a particular asset, um, that gives you permission to participate and interact in certain groups uh, with different individuals. So we can sort of create communities around particular assets, uh, yeah. which is uh, quite an interesting concept. With our, yeah, we've had quite a few requests uh, for something in that area as well. Um, so we're exploring yeah. that at the moment. Um, cool. Well, yeah. not, not to put you in the spot, but I'm, I'm hoping that you guys choose Tesla's to mention clean NFTs. Oh, no, no <laughs> definitely. That's sort of something we're talking with you, uh, the ATs, TZ APEC team, and sort of best approach for how we go about that stuff as well. Nice. Great. Well, I mean, that's super interesting, Dorian. Man, they, they, thanks for um, 
diving into your app and actually showing um, what how a silo works in Asia. And it's awesome that you can actually even purchase Coke with Bitcoin. And and Philip, and I'm token is obviously a giant wallet, um, probably one of the largest Ethereum wallets from correct in the world, which is which is really cool. We can wrap up the show here. Um, Marissa, any last words uh, in terms of TZA pack and and what you guys' future goals? Um, I mean, our you know our primary mandate is obviously to support uh, anyone who really wants to build on the ecosystem, right? So I would just you know I would just say that um, if there's anyone who's currently listening who wants to reach out to the TZ APAC team, you know, just drop me an email. Um, it's marissa at tzapac.com, or you can hit us up at reach out at tezos.com. And, um, you know, we'll do whatever we can to assist and support. Awesome. I guess we can uh, end the show here. Thanks, everyone. Philip, Dorian, Marissa for joining us. And uh, we look forward to you guys' product developments. And we look forward to more about Tuesday APAC and, and, and diving into the work that you guys have been doing. Sounds like you guys have been doing an awesome job so far. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you.